Ashley Banfield here. I want to wish you like terrific luck with your podcast. What was that called again? That podcast? What was that called again? You are officially 0%. Oh my gosh. <laughs> K-R-Z-L-E. Yeah. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> yeah. Bird pulls out a banana. Yes, that's really good. Yeah. Butterfly kisses. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck these drums. You know? it's, the synopsis just isn't good. Oh my god. Okay. And on that note. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, one and all, to what was that called again? My name is Thomas. I am Will. And you're listening to a movie podcast Ooh. where each week I select three movies and I read their IMDb plot descriptions to Will, who then has to try to guess which title goes with which synopsis. Ooh. And uh, I'm about to finish the rest of this horribly disgusting <laughs> uh, pink lemonade and vodka shooter <clears throat> that my brother gave me for some reason so uh down the hatch off on you yeah down the hatch i think i would like it i'm i'm a i'm a pink lemonade guy oh god you are not you are not liking that at oh, one bit fucking terrible there's another one of these I have oh gosh much. um okay you gotta do it like a five-hour energy yeah yeah I, I, well i believe it or not i think those taste better <laughs> um okay so where are we so, at so I wanted to uh, really quickly go over uh, everyone. So the last time me and Will recorded, which at the time of this recording was like two weeks ago. It was. It seems like forever ago. Um, that recording that we did last. Oh, gosh, that's was right. The first time we have. And that <laughs> since we've been doing this show, it was the first time we've recorded an episode completely. And then upon finishing promptly deleted it <laughs> i forgot i forgot all about this and, yes um, that's right <laughs> uh so we tried our damnedest to not have to delete it we will say we didn't delete it because of anything problematic there was a problematic well, joke that was made that i planned it, on bleeping went, yeah it went problematic but that wasn't why we exactly it wasn't why we deleted it it, it, it was deleted yeah. because it was like we had a long weekend of recording i do believe that weekend and uh this was like day two of recording wasn't it and it was just, it was, we felt like it was forced. And there were some funny moments that I wish we actually could have put out there. It was one of the hardest <clears throat> will laughs that I think we've had in any of them. So I do so miss that. The three movies that I had picked for that episode, the bit was uh, the three movies were going to be made in Italy, made in Britain, and made in America. Yes. And I delivered them in that order. And after I had given him the title for made in Britain, he, Will starts laughing because he was like, oh, I see what's going on here. And he's like, if the third title is going to be like, fuck, if the third title is like made in America or some shit. <laughs> right. I, I, I just played it off that I let him go on his little <laughs> ramble. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the third title is Made in America. <laughs> and I fucking <laughs> lost it. It was lost hilarious. It. Laughed um, for like a solid 60 seconds. And, and I had actually seen Made in America and I did call that out. Um, I think did I got a hat trick on that one too, just for because uh, yes, I, I knew Made in America I and so. I kind of I landed Made in uh, Made in Britain and Made in Italy. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those things where, like, uh, uh, as sometimes happens, um, we struggle to get past a certain point in the show, and we have to kind of uh, reach for the creative segment until something yeah. lands. Now, that's not unheard of for this show. I'm sure, as as our listeners know, there are times where we really do reach for for things. However, the problem with that recording was that we literally finished the meat of the show like 20 like, minutes in yeah the, yeah the 20 minute mark the game, and, and, yeah the whole game was over at like 20 25 minutes into the recording and we were it like, was such a fuck? fast recording we were like oh shit how do we vamp for 40 minutes and we yeah. tried and it was just it uh, we tried and it wasn't great and then we had some things we were gonna have to cut anyway and then but by, by the time we got done we had we had already kind of decided amongst ourselves privately um, that it was just not great, and we were kind of delivering that, you know, through our process anyway. And yeah, so you didn't miss much, is what is what we're getting down to. <laughs> no. Um, so so part of the idea that we very briefly 
tossed back and forth was um, the idea that so at the time you're listening to this last week's episode was our werewolf triple feature. And so one of the ideas that we soft pitched to try to stretch the length out for the made in America episode was going to be that we um, found howling seven new moon rising on YouTube in its entirety. And so what we were going to do was um, we finished the, the portion that we had recorded and we talked about, well, maybe we shouldn't delete it. Maybe we'll watch howling seven and then we'll come back and we'll talk about that movie and we'll add yes. it onto that recording to stretch out the runtime. Yeah, um, because but what we, happened... thought, <laughs> we thought that, that, that watching Howling 7 was going to give us even more content. <laughs> well, yes, what happened was we did watch Howling 7 and we were like, well, so we decided against that. We didn't linger on that idea very long and we kind of were just like, yeah, we just need to cut our losses and ditch this episode, unfortunately. Exactly. Um, and so we went ahead and we watched Howling 7 after we deleted the episode. And after we watched Howling 7, that's when we were like, man, it's a good thing we, were gonna, we weren't going to we like banking on this to that stretch movie. out the runtime for that one. Because um, I've, yeah, seen, that I've seen some bad films, and, and as have you. And let me tell you, there was absolutely nothing redeemable about Howling 7. New, New Moon Rising, right? New Moon Rising, yeah. Or as um, the title on screen, the title card did not say that. It was no. It was like the British release or something like that. The British version had a different title. I, I yeah. forget what it was now. but I can't remember what it was either. But yeah, uh, it, if you're a fan of the Howling franchise, or even just, if you're just a fan of the first one, stay there. But if you're a fan of the franchise, even then, I don't understand how anyone can qualify Howling 7, New Moon Rising as anything worthy of time. I mean, it's it was a lot, it was like, wasn't it two hours? It was... Just- it was, was felt it, like nine days. I think it was ninety minutes. It felt like I really forever. think it was ninety minutes, but it felt like it was way longer. <laughs> it felt like so long. I mean, if you're curious and you haven't seen it, you as got far some as friends this, coming over and you're drinking. Maybe not even then. Can... No, 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 no. Not even then. Don't even make a day out of it. Because here's what you can do: know that it doesn't. Uh, from what I can tell, it has n- almost nothing to do with the the storyline of the Howling franchise. No, uh, and there's nothing to see. Like we, you don't even see they, uh, they try a to monster. Kind of tie it in somewhat because they they add in these flashbacks to like part <sighs> five and or six. But it's and less, they're, they're it's trying less to tie, like yeah, it's less tying it in, and it's more of like yes, uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, where you're just using the other film to to pad out your runtime because yes. it really it really did nothing. To the actual story. The only of the werewolf film. transformation you see on screen is from a previous movie. All of the gore is from previous movies. <laughs> well, there there is one transformation that does take place in the film. That's just that that weird CG face thing. Oh, that's right. That, that's right. That, that literally happens at at like hour hour like it's like it's like. <laughs> An hour and 40 minutes in, I think. It's almost right at the very end. That's the only thing you, you actually see. So it's not worth it. Don't watch it. I, I hate saying that about any movie. I, I used to always try to say, like, you know, hey, you know, go see it and experience. No. Nothing redeemable about Howling, New Moon Rising, Howling 7. It's just a waste of time. It was really it, so bad. It's not even watch, worth seeing to see the, like, weird, dark line dancing. No, okay, so that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say, is that if you want to experience any part of it, just go on YouTube and, like, find, like, uh, like a a best of. A, that's even not even, like, the right thing to say about this movie. But, like, a, a, a condensed version of the movie. Um, clips of the film. There are some, like, really weird choices. Well, there's the whole thing's a weird choice. But there's are, like, some weird comically weird choices made um it's definitely like ripe for a riff tracks or mst3k um you know type thing but even then like only those maybe handful of scenes because the rest of the movie 90 percent of the film nothing happens nothing happens to even like riff on or joke about thomas and i went into this thing thinking we were going to have fun we even tried to predict um how the uh the opening would be with the uh yeah that was our creative bit yeah the creative week. bit was gonna yeah. be about the shovel guys and you know and thomas was close it did happen during the day there was like someone who was annoyed that the other two guys were there <laughs> but that is literally not even no joke that's literally 20 the first 20 seconds of the movie is that scene. And then after that, nothing happens. And then you get some weird line dancing and then you get like a weird 
salsa cleanup dance. There's yeah. like country music playing constantly, but not constantly. always the same song. It's like songs that like they wrote specifically for the sh- for the movie, songs that they borrowed, and then sometimes a song will just have like wolf or werewolf in the lyrics and yep, they'll play and just that line and that's yes, it. <laughs> yes, that part. They play this fucking song that said something about a wolf and, and it was just that one line. The song fades in, it says that line and then it fades back out and that was it. It was just ridiculous. Um, yeah, you can you can find what we do recommend is take 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is aside and go on to YouTube and watch the Joe Bob Monster uh, Monster yes, Vision that, that was video. Brilliant. There's a uh, Joe Bob Briggs showed Howling Seven back in the day on TNT, and you can find the video of uh, him setting the movie up. And then they also cut in all of the uh, like all the movie breaks where he talks about like what you just saw. Definitely seek that out. That's worth watching yes. for sure. <laughs> that was actually good. I actually wish we would have just um, done that because it was like. You know, it was one really condensed, but also after watching the movie, Thomas and I talked about it for like five or ten minutes, and <laughs> literally we went and watched the Joe Bob uh, uh, Monster Vision clips, and he said exactly the same thing. Yes, it was the exact same. <laughs> it was stuff. Like, we're almost word for word exactly the same reaction, and uh, so yeah, so the Howling uh, Part Seven or Howling New Moon Rising or Howling whatever version your the title says it is, uh, it's just not worth it at all. Just. I hate. I, I don't think I've ever said that about any movie. I, I like Birdemic, not even yes. just like the riff version. I, I think it's a funny, weird, weird film. Yes. I like. I like weird films like that. <sighs> Man, The Howling is not even like the room level of bad. It's like so much. It's just such a fucking waste. Yeah, because at least at least the room is like really strange and unique and like something. it's it's so it's fun something. to watch just because of how strange. And yeah like non-human it is the howling seven is um definitely nothing. a slog to get through it's, it's a bunch like of like weird... rednecks telling like bad jokes yeah it's, it's just like it just feels like it's i mean and, and it's one of those things where, like it it shouldn't be that's the other part about it is it shouldn't yeah. be that it shouldn't yeah. be what it is based off of the in, air quotes pedigree of the guy coming in to make this he's been a part of other howling films yep. he apparently loves or like takes ownership over this franchise he yeah. should have you, you would you would think he, he would have at some point <laughs> like stopped <laughs> <laughs> and been like this is not good but no, he. It, it's, so anyway, just I don't want to even want to linger on this yeah. anymore. What yeah, we already yeah. have. You can read the full the full write up, which will be posted soon, on our letterbox sure. uh, on the Howling Seven, and uh, so which by I, the time I, this episode comes out, which will be like mid May. Oh gosh, that's right. <laughs> be, yeah, yeah sorry. Up for a couple of months, probably. I'm, okay. What, what I mean by soon is like as of this recording, I'm going to write it very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, it's up there. Uh, you, it, it'll be. Uh, even more to the point than this was. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, we just wanted to bring that back since we did lose the episode in between uh, the howling, re- re- the howling episode and mm-hmm. us watching it. Uh, we wanted to bring it up here. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that's over with because that fucking movie, it was just, yeah. I don't care how, I don't care how long that film was. It was too long and I'll never get that time back. And now I'm, I'm going to leave the duty of you leaving the letterbox review um so that way now you have <laughs> to linger on it a little bit longer and then you'll be done and you can move past it forever and never have to revisit it again thank you i appreciate that that's correct and much like things we never have to revisit it again um this episode i guess uh we can dive in <laughs> that was an amazing segue <laughs> thank you thank you you can dive in uh to this week's episode all right. Um, I do. I do. Uh, will have three movies selected. I didn't just call you on um, to w- without any movies ready to go. So I do have three movies ready that. for this okay. episode. Uh, so we can do our little uh, reg- regular hijinks that we like to do. Oh, I love some regular hijinks. <laughs> and uh, so if you're ready, I am ready for regular hijinks. All righty. Well, um, you're going to be starting out this week. With a film that comes from the year 1987. 87. Okay. 87. Yeah. Do you remember that year? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll see. Uh, wasn't around then. We'll see I if mean, this movie. I've heard of that year. 
We'll see if this sounds or feels familiar. Okay. Um, your synopsis, I've seen things from that year, yes. <laughs> your synopsis for this film reads uh, directly from IMDb as follows. A small town f- farmer's son reluctantly joins a traveling group of vampires after he is bitten by a beautiful drifter. Ooh. 1987, a small town farmer's son reluctantly joins a group of vampires after he's bitten by a beautiful drifter. Yes. Interesting. So I wonder why he reluctantly joins them. Oh, I have seen one of these three movies uh, that we're going to be talking about this week. Okay. And I do have a quote. Okay. So let's go. Cool. Um, 87 vampire movies. I don't, I'm not familiar with vampire movies in the 80s, really. So, mm. But I'm curious as to why he would be reluctant to join the group. Hmm, is he like, is he shy? Is he like too afraid to become a vampire? Has he not transitioned yet? Yeah, or or, that's or what I was think. this was this beautiful drifter not a vampire? Maybe he just got bit by someone random, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then these vampires showed up and were like, "Hey, join us!" And he was like, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah, it's either that or, um, or he gets bitten. And then he's reluctant to join because he's like, why would I want to join you? <laughs> this woman just randomly bit me. Or man, yeah. it could be a beautiful man drifter. So, so he doesn't even know that he's like a vampire yet is what you're saying. Yeah, that, that's interesting. That The reluctant part is, is I'm curious about. Okay. Or it could just some be kind of, that somebody wrote a weird synopsis and it's not even really totally oh, accurate. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's always a possibility. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think there's a reason why reluctant. Almost like, I wonder if there's like a... like. Like his family needs him on the farm, maybe. I don't know. I, I wonder if there's some tie in there. Okay, next one. Nineteen eighty seven small town farmer. If you son. join that traveling group, these cows ain't gonna milk themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? We got twenty seven acres of corn coming in, Todd. We gotta <laughs> we gotta harvest this year. We we don't make make the payment on the farm if you don't help us. But Dad, I've been I've been I got bit. A, I got a Last night. <laughs> it's like Keanu Reeves. I've, I've been bit, Dad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right. your uh, your second flick is going to come from 1967. Ooh. Okay. We're hitting the seven. So we're, we're jumping back 20 years. 20 years. And uh, the synopsis for this one reads as follows. I don't know that year either, by the way. Oh, you don't. You were not around yet. I, I was also not around yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, your synopsis, if you're around, you may have seen this movie. Your synopsis reads as follows. A recently blinded woman is terrorized by a trio of thugs while they search for a heroin stuffed doll they believe is in her apartment. Ooh, that's interesting. I like this. Um, Read this one more time. Okay. One more time. I will read it. A recently blinded woman is terrorized recently. by a trio of thugs while they search for a heroin stuffed doll they believe is in her apartment. So a 1967, a recently blinded woman is terrorized by a group of thugs as they search for a heroin stuffed doll they believe is in her apartment. Mm -hmm. So not only is she dealing with the new world of being without sight uh, and all the traumas involved with, 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 I'm sure with that. um, But now she's also being terrorized by thugs who for some reason think she has a doll that she must have like recently acquired or somehow acquired and they knew about it that they think that the thugs think is stuffed with heroin. That's so crazy. So crazy. It might be good. (laughs) (laughs) I I like this though. I like that. I like this. It's it's such like a, uh, it's such a random, like it feels like something that you and I would like pull from a hat <laughs> to piece together, but mm-hmm. it, but it sounds better than that. Eh? Even, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I, I like I, whatever this is. I'm intrigued by this. Mm-hmm. Okay, third one. Uh, your third movie is going to come from the year 2023. Oh damn! I wasn't around for that year either. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Will is eight months old. <laughs> no, I, no, I was alive. I just wasn't around. <laughs> 2000, 2000, wait, wait, 2023? Yes. Oh, that was last year. Shit, yeah, I wasn't yep. around yep. mentally. <laughs> I think I saw uh, two movies last year. Yes. Uh, me too, almost. <laughs> Your uh, synopsis for this film for 2023 is reads as follows. Um, not quite. Okay. 
Oppenheimer. A group, a group of teenagers. <laughs> what if it was? That'd be funny. That'd be amazing. <laughs> a group of teenagers take a trip to an isolated summer house in the countryside. What starts as a peaceful getaway turns into a horrific nightmare when a masked man begins to terrorize them in the most gruesome ways. Ooh. Okay, uh, a group of teenagers? What was this again? A group of teenagers into a, a summer home? Something Take like that? Take a trip to an isolated summer house in the countryside. Okay. What starts as a peaceful getaway turns into a horrific nightmare when a masked man begins to terrorize them in the most gruesome ways. Interesting. I mean, this sounds kind of like shallow um, with, with the masked man. And, hmm, okay. Uh, I don't know this one. This doesn't sound or feel familiar at all. And this came out last year. Jesus. Yes. Oh, my God. This is bad if I don't know this film. <laughs> okay. Um, a group of teens on a summer getaway, on a getaway to a summer home, a peaceful mm-hmm. summer home, uh, are, are terrorized by a masked man. Yep. Who, who tortures them in, a gr- in gruesome ways? Terrorizes, yes. Terror, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, that's interesting. I don't know. I have no idea what that one could be. So now I'm really curious. We have we have a vampire film, a blind heroin doll, and a, a peaceful summer getaway turned gruesome. Yeah. Okay. T- t- titles sorry 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 i didn't mean to segue into your into your segment here you title first, me please the first title i'm going to give you is wait until dark mm. see that that title sounds really familiar so i think that title came out last year wait until dark yes wait until dark hmm maybe that's like what the mask man like 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 a note that he leaves these teens <laughs> <clears throat> like on the window or something like that or like a phone call it's like he's like wait until dark and like oh my god it's, it's already it's already freaky and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon i can't imagine what it would be like if i <laughs> wait until dark um yeah that line, I, that, those words can only be whispered yeah it's, yeah well that's in the trailer I, i'm assuming that you're that you're taking the the voiceover from the trailer and just putting them over my wait until dark um yeah i don't think that one would be the um the well i don't know vampires in darkness fuck um there is that possibility but i but I, that title really rings a bell and it can only ring a bell if i've seen it <laughs> so i thought you were gonna say it can only ring a bell if it came out last year <laughs> if it came out last year that's the only way that works um no, is it, it well? Yeah, sort of though. Is if I've seen it. No, sorry, I don't mean seen the movie. I mean like actually just seen the title. title. Yeah, and that means that I've probably seen it like on Twitter or you know like somewhere scrolling somewhere. I saw Wait Until Dark and 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 that's where I know that title from because none of the I don't think I've seen any of these films at all. Um, yeah. Okay. Next title, please. Wait Until Dark. Okay. The second title you're gonna get is gonna be Near Dark. Oh, damn it. Okay, that also sounds familiar. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it's going to be... Wait, let me try this. It's going to be wait until dark, near dark, and then just dark. <laughs> dark, just the third one? Or or now dark? Um, or this, now is, it's dark. Is, is, this the, uh, is this the After Dark trilogy, which is the, uh, the, 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 the three dark films of... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, near dark. Uh, again, vampires. I don't see that either of these two um, make sense with the thugs and the newly blinded woman. Um, I mean, I think it'd be too too on the nose or too dumb to say any kind of correlation between blindness and dark. Um, I could be way wrong, though. So <laughs> there's that. But I just feel like, so I feel like I feel like you haven't given me the title for the blind heroin doll story yet, but now it's just deciding which one of the two dark film near dark or wait until dark near dark near dark could, could have multiple meanings though. Near dark could mean like, um, like a, a time of day, like, right. It's near dark. 
mm-hmm. it's near nighttime, or it could also mean that like I haven't fully transitioned into vampire yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm near dark. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm close to darkness. I'm close to evil. So maybe I'm still going with wait until dark as I did. I, I know I've seen that on the, for some reason there's like a, there's like a, a guy in a hat on the poster. I think maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Third title, please. Your third title is dark windows. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. So that one does not sound familiar at all. Dark windows. Okay. Hmm. Dark windows. Dark windows. I mean, okay. So maybe they did go with the blind thing because the eyes are the windows to the soul. So dark windows is she's blind. Maybe dark windows. (laughs) That's tough. I mean, okay. I don't think dark windows fits with the small town farmer whose son is uh, hesitant to join a group of vampires after being bitten by a beautiful drifter. Dark Windows doesn't feel like it fits there. But the summer home? Dark Windows. No, I still feel... I'm going to almost lock in the... 2023 group of teens who expect to have a pleasant um, vacation at a summer home and are then terrorized in a gruesome way by a masked man. I'm going to go ahead and lock that in as wait until dark. I feel like wait until dark is a, is like foreboding and it sounds like it kind of, it kind of fits the mask killer idea and I still want to say that, like, I, I've never seen this movie, of course, but I still want to say that, like, that feels like that's something that the, that the killer tells them. Or that someone in the movie says, like, oh, you think this is creepy now? Wait until dark. Right? And it's always, like you said, it's always whispered. It has to be. <laughs> the line has to be whispered. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lock that one in. Wait until dark is that. Is the 2023 movie. So, dark windows. And what was it again? Near dark? Yeah, near dark. Yeah. Near dark. It's again. I hate the idea of just being a coin flip. I, I want to actually like attach it to something. Um, <laughs> just I don't see how the windows part fits the vampire thing. So I'm going to say that the 1967 film of the recently blinded woman it, who is. Uh, terrorized by a group of thugs who think a doll is stuffed with heroin in her, in her apartment or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I want to say that that's dark windows and like <clears throat> the poster is probably going to be something like her face, like a like stylized version of her face, like black and like some color, like red or whatever. And she's like screaming and maybe her eyes are closed. And then there's like, like a house, and and all the windows are black. And it's just called dark windows. That's my poster for dark windows. <laughs> I'm trying a new tactic now where I just I just designed the poster. <laughs> and that leaves the 1987 uh a small town farmer's son is bitten by um or sorry, is hesitant to join a a group of vampires after he's bitten by a beautiful drifter as near dark. And either like he was like walking or she was, she, he was like, he was driving the tractor. That's what it is. He's driving the tractor from the field back, back to like the barn. And it's, you know, he's been plowing, the, <laughs> he's been plowing the fields all day and it's near dark. That's why she's out in the first place. Cause obviously she couldn't be out during the day. So it's near dark and he finds her and, uh, gets bitten. Yeah. So Near Dark is, is that movie. So Near Dark is 1960s, 1987 vampire, beautiful drifter, hesitant to join the vampire club. Uh, Dark Windows is the 67 film with a woman who's recently blind. There's a doll full of heroin. A group of thugs wants it. And then Wait Until Dark is the 2023 film with the teens in the summer home. 
who who think there's going to be a peaceful time, and then all of a sudden they're terrorized in a gruesome way by a masked killer. Locking it in. Okay. And with that locked in, this week you're going to have one out of three correct. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Your favorite. Oh. Okay, so I mean, I have to stick. God damn it! I fucking. Why would you name? Uh, wait until dark. Wait until dark. Why do I think that has a? The poster of that has a guy with a cowboy hat on. It makes no <laughs> sense that it would be teens. But I also feel like I've seen that recently. So it has to be 2023. So I'm going to have to... Oh, man. I'm going to have to stick with Wait Until Dark as, as the one I have it as. As the teens in the summer home. Mass killer. Gruesome. And that means that Dark Windows is the fucking... What does that mean? Why is that even a fucking... Why is that even a thing? Dark Windows. Dark Windows is the vampire one? That makes no sense if that's correct. I mean, near Dark... Near dark sort of makes sense with the blind thing because maybe her vision is like near dark, mm -hmm. right? So I could maybe stretch that. But dark windows? What does that even mean with the vampire one? Does he have to like, does he have, does he get bit and then he goes home and then like he freaks out come morning and it's time to like get the eggs out of the, out of the chicken coop. And he's like, because like the sun's coming in his windows, and he has to like he has to like black out his windows to, to survive or whatever. Oh, he's going directly to the like completely like literal use of the title. Well, I mean, what else could I went I went at least with the, with a metaphor for the eyes whenever I did that one, but I still feel like Wait Until Dark is correct. Oh so my gosh! It, so it starts out that way, and then the, the the next like eighty minutes of the movie are him in a chicken coop trying to keep. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's why he's hesitant to leave and to join the, the vampire group is because he he he's worried about they're, you know they're blowing up his cell phone and he's like i can't i can't, I can't, I can't. Leave. the sun's out there it hurts um damn it i mean it's, it's only because i i really feel like wait until dark is the 2023 film mm. okay let me try to analyze that i don't think Near dark. I mean, the, it's a mass killer, so any title could make sense with that. It doesn't make. It doesn't matter. Um, that's why I feel like Wait Until Dark has to be the 2023 film, is because that it's kind of like a threat. It's kind of like a foreboding statement, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Dark Windows, <laughs> Dark Windows means nothing. Uh, maybe in like maybe this was like a maybe this farmer's son was like really into like computers. And uh, you know, Windows Windows just came out. <laughs> DOS. <laughs> and he's, and now he's because he got bit by a vampire, now he's on Dark Windows. He's on Dark Windows. <laughs> which is where which is where the he finds out about the vampire club is is through, you know, <laughs> through some uh, e email chain or so I don't know how they did social media back then. Uh, uh, okay. All right. I don't know why. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna flip the I'm gonna keep Wait until dark where it's at. I'm going to flip. So 1987, small town mm -hmm. farmer's son is hesitant to join a vampire group, club, clan uh, after being bitten by a beautiful drifter. We're going to call that one Dark Windows. God, that's so stupid. If it's right, that's so dumb. And <laughs> that means that the 1967 film where the recently blind woman is terrorized by a group of thugs who think that uh, a doll is stuffed with heroin in her apartment uh, as near dark. Final answer. So All right. dumb. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'll almost be happy if I get zero of these correct. Um, but I still have this weird feeling of knowing wait until dark. Go ahead. You have zero. Oh my gosh. So why do I know wait until dark then? Um, well, we can go over these really quick. I want to know if the poster has a guy in a cowboy hat on it. That's what I want to know. The answer is no. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Wait until dark is the one that I have seen. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, let's hear about these movies. Damn it. So this is one that's going to be really embarrassing for us, for us both, but I have not yet seen near dark from 1987. The vampire. So I was, is, okay. It is I the debut directorial debut of one Catherine Bigelow. Okay. Never heard of her. 
It is a <laughs> very well respected in the horror community. Oh uh, shit, really? Movie. Um, it is a big reason why I'm really embarrassed. I've wanted to watch it for a long time. The movie to this day does not have a very good release. Every now and then it'll pop up on Criterion Channel or yeah. uh, it's been on Shutter a couple of times and I missed it. Um, a piece of info is that the word vampire is evidently never used in the movie. Oh, interesting. And um, they call them biters or something? <laughs> they call them long pigs. <laughs> they call them dumb toothies. <laughs> uh, Catherine Bigelow's, uh, at the time, boyfriend, James Cameron. Never heard of him either. Suggested I heard that they're still together, right? She recommended <laughs> that he use, uh, or that she use the cast from Aliens that he just worked with for the movie. And she did to some extent. And so the cast, just like Aliens, includes Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton, really? and Jeanette Goldstein. Yeah, Bill Paxton's the lead in it. Um, Holy shit. Is he the son? Is he the... Uh, I believe so. The one that gets bit? I think so, yeah. I, I, know, awesome. I just know I know he's like the main character. And on the poster, he's the main guy. He's got like a leather jacket and like dark sunglasses on. Oh, nice. Um, streaming... <laughs> Oh, at the time of recording right now, which is March 24th. So who knows by the time this episode That's comes true. out. Yeah. But at the time of recording this, it is streaming on the Criterion channel. Um, so it is able to be found pretty easily. Hopefully just one day. Bill, an, an extra Bill Paxton film to go watch him do is awesome. Or can Hopefully someday the movie gets a good uh, like Criterion or somebody needs to put it out because it does not have a Blu-ray, Blu-ray release at all in America. Sad. Um Next up from 1967 is Wait Until Dark. Why? <laughs> from director Terrence Young. Okay. All right. The movie stars uh, Audrey Hepburn and okay. Alan Arkin. The more, uh, the more you say about this, the more this does start to sound familiar now. At the time of recording, it is streaming on Tubi. Okay. Evidently in full, or you can rent it for like four bucks on Amazon. I don't know why it's that expensive. Um, Catherine Hepburn. I guess so. Um, one of the things that I read about it on the trivia was that apparently Alan Arkin said that getting his role, which he, he plays like the, the thug, like the lead I mean, yeah, guy I mean, thug. Yeah. of the trio. <clears throat> Um, the one who's like for the film. who's really after the heroin. <laughs> he said <laughs> uh, getting the role was really easy to do because uh, basically nobody wanted to play the part that he plays in the movie because his character is like so villainous and also nobody wanted to play a part where they were being that mean to Audrey Hepburn in the movie. Audrey so Hepburn, yeah. It I was like hard. Nobody wanted to. Nobody wanted to do the part, and so he said that it was pretty easy to get. Um, which I thought huh. was pretty funny. That's interesting, yeah. And then um, that leads us to 2023 with Dark Windows. Now it makes I no did, sense. I did not have. There was no trivia on IMDb for this movie. This movie has only a few hundred ratings, so this is like some not very uh, widely known movie. Clearly, uh, you can rent it on Amazon for like two bucks. It's like a dollar ninety nine to rent it at the time of recording right now. And I would like to see it because that sounds like something I'd be interested to see. I like home invasion movies. Yeah, I mean, it does sound it does sound like this. It sounds it's kind of kind of one of those tropey, you know, yes. been done before. But I, I do like those types of, of mass killer in a in a house, especially in, in, especially in like a summer home where no one yeah. is really familiar with the layout of the it's structure. the kind of specific subgenre that I really like to see what they are trying to do differently yes. at this point with the kind of like found footage. I, I love found footage movies, knowing that most of them are not very good. <laughs> but I, yes. I still love to watch them and see like what, what their idea is and what they're trying to do different with it. It's yeah. always interesting, I think. Um, so this is your Wait Until Dark poster not featuring a guy in a cowboy hat that you were talking about. <laughs> oh my God. It's not even close to what no. I was thinking, but I mean, but it is, it is Audrey Hepburn's face. I think yes. screaming yes. and her eyes are dark. I had that part close. Yes. In front of a uh, candlelight. And it is, is stylized. Is. It is a stylized version of, of her face. It's not like a color photo. It's like a famous, uh, kind of a famous in there is. Um, so wait until dark. Is probably nowadays most known for uh, there is a very famous, super duper effective jump scare 
in the movie that is oh, amazing. Really? Yes. So I watched this movie recently because I got the Blu-ray. And uh, so I watched it for the first time just like a month or two ago. And uh, my girlfriend had seen it before and she still jumped at the, oh, nice. jump, at the jump scare. That's moment. always good. It's, it's fantastic. Because it, it, what makes a jump scare good and what makes bad jump scares bad is not the uh the moment of uh release it's actually the tension that builds up before that because if it's good Mm -hmm. if it's a good scare good jump scare that means that the tension that built up that moment Mm -hmm. is what is effective and that can be done over and over again even if you know it's coming right So, so like like the best example um and the most ridiculous example in, in the same breath is um, a Jack in the Box. Uh, everyone knows the song and everyone knows that the cranking of that handle will release the Jack in the Box, right? And the releasing of the Jack in the Box is not uh, a, an overwhelming moment, <laughs> right? But it's the tension that builds up mm-hmm. before that that makes that moment, uh, you know, uh, ooh, mm-hmm. uh, right? So it's the same thing. Is that bad? The reason people hate jump scares is not necessarily because of um, the moment that releases the tension. It's, it's because the tension that is supposed to be there is not there. And we kind of, I think a lot of filmmakers um, forget that and they try to put everything in the, in the popping of the balloon and they don't put any effort in the blowing up of the balloon. Yes. Like very cheap setups to just pay off a jump scare. Exactly. Which, which is what's great not to spoil anything involving the moment of the jump scare but it's the whole movie builds up uh, like pretty much by the time you get to this point in the movie there has been so much tension uh, that has been built up uh, the movie it's not a horror movie but it's like a, it's a crime it's, psychological it's, a, it's thriller. a thriller it's a very psychological thriller yes because <laughs> she is she is blind and they are um, uh, kind of messing with her a little bit so that is psychological technically but uh anyway yeah so it's it's like purely like the fantastic writing and execution of the script that it, that is where the tension comes from it's not like a singular moment that's like oh yeah. it's it's building up this moment right here and then the jump's going to come it's yeah. like the because of the tension that's been built up throughout the whole course of this movie leading that's up awesome. to this moment cuz it's it's also it's not something that builds up with music or anything it's just bam it happens and it gets you it is fucking great it is, awesome. it is it is fantastic well and, um, and see and now and so and that's also the beauty of a good jump scare too mm-hmm. um just to for some reason we're going to stick on this topic <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I mean i i really love uh ju- I, the concept of jump scares mm-hmm. um but the uh, but what's what's amazing is you having just set that up and just explain that um oddly enough if it's a good jump scare will actually enhance the jump scare and what i mean is is that now people know that it's going to be something that happens in in some moment in the film which adds to the tension that the film already instills within us yeah right so this whole moment now people who have listened to this are going to be knowing that there's something that's going to be happening which is already tension inducing and then the tension of the film will build upon that if it was a bad jump scare then that wouldn't happen because the entire time you're waiting for something to happen Mm-hmm. and it never gets built up for it right mm-hmm. so it's interesting like i said i think i think as a community we need to like and by community i mean like the horror community <laughs> not not you and i <laughs> but uh we need to all like reconsider jump scares and understand that they're bad not because of the moment but because of the the journey to get there yeah but one of my favorite <laughs> to linger one more minute on this that's fine yeah. one of my favorite <clears throat> jump scare maybe my number one favorite jump scare it's of all time three. is uh uh the thing oh oh the, the blood the, the blood, blood sample test. yeah exactly, exactly. That, that is yeah. the only one that i can think of off the top of my head that has made me jump more than once um at the same exact moment because i i used to i i not anymore so much now but i used to forget which one it was that it happens on and especially if you're watching that the first time you don't really know what's going to happen to it he just like has this theory that like oh if i put this 
hot wire into the blood, it's going to react it's because a it's a living no organism. Idea. Yeah, and even like the other guys there don't believe them. They're they're kind of like this is bullshit. Like what, what, like why do you think this is going to work? <laughs> and it's, so whatever it does happen, the combination of like it happening in general, the thing that fucking like jumps out of it and also the screech that it makes whenever it yes. reacts to the hot thing that is like the most amazing jump scare yep. and again there's not like this music that builds up to it or anything like that be. it's just the moment yeah. like you're in the well, moment in this movie yeah, and it's you're in the it's moment so it's, the, it's not it's not even the moment of of that sample reacting it's the fact that like multiple well, one it's the fact that we've seen what this shit can do already in previous moments of, of the film uh, two, it's the fact that we don't know if what he's about to do will even work. And then, like you said, if you have seen this before, uh, it's just forgetting which one it happens on, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but also, uh, we also know the stakes that uh, uh, finding this thing, it actually working, the test working, what that means in that moment. So there's a payoff beyond just the just the actual uh, excitement of, of, oh shit, this thing's alive. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like, oh fuck, this thing's in the room with me. You know, uh, yeah. and I and now and now I have to deal with it, and then all of a sudden the guy's face becomes a spider. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next film. Next, was uh, that what all of them? That was all of them. Yeah, that was all of them. So now um, we go on to the portion where you try to figure out if you can um, guess the star rankings, the IMDb star rankings for the okay, movies. Okay, I, I feel like this is probably going to be a pretty wide uh, range. I have a feeling um, you might be correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I feel like probably easily enough, it's going to be easy to say that uh, Dark Windows will be... Wait, was, was it the 2023 one? Yes. Right? Okay. <clears throat> that Dark Windows will be the last film. <laughs> just because of the... It hasn't been watched very often. Um, no one really knows about it. <clears throat> it might be good. I don't know. But yeah. uh, I feel like Audrey Hepburn and Alan Arkin probably bring a pretty good you know ranking to the film already and then the fact that you said it was grid which yeah we, i was gonna say one other thing that i forgot i didn't notate but i remembered reading um so apparently so this was alan arkin's second movie oh wow <clears throat> and he he was nominated for an oscar for his first movie before this one and um it was it was like a retrospective interview that I think the quote came from, but they were asking him if he was surprised whenever this movie came out and he did not get a nomination. Really? Which I want to say sidebar Alan Arkin's performance is my favorite part of the movie. His character and his performance is fucking great. But um, anyway, yeah, he was asked if he um, was surprised that he was not nominated and his response was, um, he said something along the lines of uh, you don't get an Oscar nomination for being mean to Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, well, and so like I, you said, I just like no one cute. wanted this role because of that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like he still like gave a pretty good performance. Um, uh, yeah. He, so, he owns that movie. I okay, think he, so he's still so good. Exactly. So because of that, when I think this is th that um, uh, this is wait, this is not near dark. Is this wait after until dark? dark. Wait until dark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wait until dark. <laughs> after uh, dark. 67. Audrey Hepburn. Alan Arkin. Uh, recently blind. Yeah. Um, I think that one's top of the list. And I'd say this, this is probably like 7-1 maybe. Um, with um, Dark Windows probably being like 5-4. 5.4. And then that leaves... Um, what was the first film? Something dark, <laughs> dark windows, near no. dark, near dark. That's what it was. Near dark being right in the middle. And I'll say that near dark is probably even, um, I would say probably right in the middle, evenly spaced between the two of these films, whatever that math is. So it'll be, it'll be, um, it'll be, uh, Fuck, what was the movies again? It was Wait Until Dark. Wait Until Dark, 67. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, Wait Until Dark, uh, Near Dark, and then Dark Windows. Okay. Okay. That is the correct order. Nice. Wait Until Dark is first with a 7.7. 7. Oh, wow. Even higher. Uh, Near Dark is second with a 6.9. Wow. And Dark Windows 
coming in third with a 4.4 okay so it was a wide range yes yes (laughs) um and then we can segue directly into our quote time because i do have a quote for you this week okay and this is a quote uh taken from imdb um given in a character of your choosing that may or may not be a character from the actual film and um do we know can you tell me is this just a single line or is this a piece of dialogue or like what is this yes i debated between like three or four different ones the other ones were like dialogue back and forth this one is <clears throat> a singular line one okay, person singular line. one character singular line from one of these movies in a character of your choosing yep um and since you've only seen you said you've only seen one of these movies yes so this may even be a movie that you haven't seen it's very possible. Okay. In fact, it it's more, it's most it's, likely it's, given it's like the like 66% chance here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. And uh, the quote reads, as written on IMDb, as follows. And I quote, Howdy. I'm going to separate your head from your shoulders. Hope you don't mind none. Oh, God. Howdy, howdy. That's an interesting intro to that. <laughs> yes. Howdy, I'm going to separate your head from your shoulders. I hope you don't mind much. Hope you don't mind none. Hope you don't mind none. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I love this. Howdy, I'm going to separate your head from your shoulders. I hope you don't mind none. This doesn't feel like a vampire thing. Um, I mean, unless it's like, unless it's like, uh, the farmer like attacking the vampires like they've got his son like that like they've tried to like uh you know uh, uh take his son and he's he's ho- he's trying to keep his son there to hopefully you know bring him back from vampirism or whatever and this farmer comes out with like a fucking like hoe or shovel or even like a one of those with the siths or, or one of those things that like the like a sickle sickle yeah a scythe. A scythe yeah that's, that's how you say it uh he's just like uh, he's just like he tips his hat howdy i hope you don't mind none, but i'm gonna separate your head from your shoulders hope you don't mind uh, none. uh that could be it. and the howdy fits that the farmer thing i don't know if the howdy fits the heroin driving thugs I can't, I don't know if I can see, I mean, maybe because she's like, maybe, uh, Audrey, Audrey's character, like very much like her is kind of like an erudite. Like maybe she's like an upper class person who is like in a nice place and he's like a lowly, like, you know, like a thug, like a street country thug. Maybe, I don't know. None of that makes sense. I just said it out loud. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking that maybe like, they're just trying to show like the, the cultural separation between the two of them. Um, and then he's kind of, the thug is kind of playing to her level of being, you know, erudite and mannerisms and all that stuff by saying, howdy, ma'am, hope you don't mind none, but I'm, you know, maybe that's, what, but also, it's not a horror film. So then it's more like a, th- I don't think, he, I don't think there's any, any blood in that film at all. Probably. So then it doesn't have to be a line from a horror movie specifically. No, but it's very violent. I mean, right. So then the last one is the mask killer who tortures or terrorizes these teens in a gruesome manner. Very gruesome to have your head separated from your shoulders. And there's also kind of a sickish, concept between um being able to politely say that line with a straight face in a situation where that person's probably tied up you know uh so i'm gonna kind of have to go with 2023's dark windows and you're wrong oh my god is it really the first one is the vampire dark Bill Paxton says it in Near Dark. Nice. So it is the vampire. Okay. So I should have gone with the farmer. Okay. That was almost a given. Oh, whatever. I was afraid that one was going to be too easy. (laughs) No, it really should have been too easy. I overanalyzed it. Yes. Obviously. That was why uh, I picked it. I was hoping you would. But 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 I didn't think you would. I just didn't imagine like the vampire thing would have that gruesome of a a moment. That's pretty awesome that it does. That's cool. I want to see that even more now. At least somebody says it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it happens, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> that's also true yeah it could just be a threat yeah it could be interrupted immediately by uh something kind 
All it right. is uh, noted as being a horror western. Oh, really? Yeah, I, want this, I guess. I, I love um, this even more then. I guess the script was originally meant to be just it was supposed to be a western. Um, but then uh, I was reading something about it somewhere along the line while they were writing the story. They were kind of like, yeah, this is kind of more of a horror thing. And then they just decided to make Wait, it like a straight. It. That's fucking awesome. Western. Yeah. I love that. I love, uh, I, written, I love the idea that they didn't set out to make it be a horror film and that it just naturally like wanted to go that route. That sounds like it's going to be more promising than if, than if, if it was the other way where like, yeah. you know, it, it was a horror to begin with. And, and but wait, hold on. But was it always going to be a Western even with vampires? I believe so, yes. Oh, that's it's, weird. Uh, co-written by Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, and, heard her, I think. And uh, Eric Red, whom I don't think is necessarily best known for, but I know him best uh, because the year before Near Dark, he had written the script for The Hitcher in 1986 with Rutger Hauer and C. Thomas Howell. The Hitcher, that sounds familiar too. I love that movie. Yeah, it's. Is that the actual? Is that the one that like the Hitchhiker? No. Yeah, Wrecker Howard okay. Hitchhikes. <laughs> this will be a future episode of, of what was that called again? <laughs> We're going to have the Hitchhiker, the Hitcher, and there's a third one that's like this as well. I, I, have I don't have I seen that with you? Have you shown me that that clip? The Hitcher. I think so. Um, maybe there's a guy in a car. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one where they're both killers? Uh, there's a movie called The Hitcher, and I know that there's a guy in a car in it. Um, no, Steve Thomas Howell is being like, like endlessly tormented by Rutger Hauer. He picks up Rutger Hauer in the very beginning of the movie, and Rutger Hauer is like a crazy killer. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then C. Thomas Howell this, is I've getting chased of it. by him pretty much for the rest of the movie. Yep. He's trying to get rid of him and it has like uh, the great climax because um, Jennifer Jason Lee is in it as well, and it has like a famous climax where Rutger Hauer has Spoilers. rigged it up to where she is tied by her wrists and by her ankles. Yes, uh, in between a semi truck and a tow truck, and, no, and and um, uh, like a pickup or a, another something like semi that. or yes. something and, like that. Yes. I think they're and in they like a to, truck yard. They try to pull her, pull her apart. I think I, I think you have shown me this, or at least parts of it. Yeah. So I need to figure out um, why it is that uh, Bill Paxton's character is hesitant to uh, join this vampire group. Now, you, you have seen this one? No, you haven't seen this one. No. This one we, we were just talking about. Right, okay. I'm um, just testing you there. That's all that was. <laughs> so so I, I, I just want to figure out. I mean, clearly, uh, oh, I'm, I'm seeing the poster here. Uh, Bill Paxton. That is, that's crazy though. That's Bill Paxton. He's very like darkened. <laughs> almost like he has like oil on his face or something. I don't even know what happened to him. Like, wow, that's crazy. Um, what does the tagline there say? It says, they can only kill you once. But they can terrify you forever. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> and then it says near dark. And then underneath near dark, it says dot, 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 pray for daylight. Pray for daylight. Okay. So why is he hesitant to join? If the synopsis is written correct and accurately, why is he, why do you think he's hesitant to join? He's already been bitten. <laughs> So clearly, and, and the tagline... I like, I like your idea that the person who bit him wasn't even a vampire. <laughs> I, just, I, just like the, I just like that idea of just like... Just <laughs> like uh, anytime anyone's bit, it's almost like a weird like Scientology thing. Like anytime you just like actually search the word or whatever, like all of a sudden you're getting like shit in the mail. But like uh, it, it, anytime anyone is just bit, like there's some kind of alarm that goes off at Vampire HQ. It's just like, hey, we should check this out and see this guy wants to join our club um but no uh but i guess I, like I i'm more curious why he's hesitant because yeah. um it the tagline clearly gives it away that that he or well, not necessarily gives it away but it alludes to the idea that he is actually a vampire so he did actually get bit by, by a, a vampire um so if you're transitioning or having transitioned into a vampire that means you have died and have mm -hmm. re animated or reawoken or whatever um but why would why would he be hesitant 
to join the club. You think it's like the he's fond m- of his life as a simple follower. <laughs> I was say, do you think it's he's like the membership fees? Not ready to fees? give it all up yet. Like, do you think it's like the rules or something? He's um, not ready to give it all up for the glitz and glam of the I just undead wonder, life. I, I like when there's like some kind of uh, semblance of humanity left over. Um, and like sometimes it's like uh, you know. Uh, uh, a fondness for like a loved one, right? Like the loved one will call out to like a zombie or, uh, you know, whatever a vampire or a werewolf or whatever. Right. And there's like a moment where like there's a hesitation and there's like maybe like, you know, uh, an inkling of the, the, the humanity is still in there somewhere. Right. The human is still in there. Um, but I, I like to take that idea and, just, and, <laughs> and make it about like the chickens. <laughs> So, um, you know, because uh, I'm sure that you know it's just probably it's just probably him and his dad on this farm, right? And there's no one else in town. And he's like, like you said, he's been here his whole I life. Can't leave dad, I can't, <laughs> Paul. No, ever Paul. since mom died in that crash back right. in November. Exactly. That's all he has. <laughs> That's all Paul has is, is his son. And um, now his son wants to like wear leather jackets all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And only stays up at night. Son, um, you're, you're seeming more dark lately than normal. But what if, like, what if, like, right before dawn? So you know, he has to go back inside. He has to go away from the sun. So right before dawn, whenever he's heading to some shelter from the sun to go sleep, maybe it's at the, maybe it's at the wherever the club is, wherever the vampire hangs at, group hangs out, some like deserted mortuary on the edge of town or something like that as he's headed in so sun has not come up yet he hears in, in the distance the rooster crowing cock doodle doo <laughs> and that like and that makes him like stop <laughs> but it's not a rooster crowing it's just it's just it's a, dad it's just you going cock a doodle doo it's just me yeah. there's like a shot of the landscape <laughs> they didn't they didn't <laughs> It's like that fame. What, what's that? A song? Uh, it's like um, it, it plays in like every early, you know, early cartoon. Whenever there's a sun rising, you know, yeah, yeah. it's that one playing. You know, and there's like the sun is just, it's not even peeking over yet because otherwise he, he would be crisp. But it, the sky is getting lighter basically, and then there's a farm in the distance, and maybe uh, you know a cow grazing sleepily, you know, on, on the side there, and it's still twilight. But in the morning, and all of a sudden, cockadoodle do. <laughs> Just that's all that's heard. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, fine. Uh, they didn't have the budget for the actual the actual animal sound. <laughs> yeah, that's where they had to really cut out the rooster sound effect to meet the budget. <laughs> oh, I mean, it could have been you know trademarked. It could have been copyrighted, and uh, they didn't get the rights to it. There's no other cockadoodle to do like stock sounds I that will, are out there. I will tell you that I this is a crazy off the rails topic here, but I was I had a video pinged once um, that was using bird sounds, and it was bird sounds that were copywritten, and it got taken down. So it can't. It could happen, I guess. Anyway, um, so I, I say that he uh, he's he's hearkened back to his whatever like he's alan arkin back he's alan arkin (laughs) back to whatever uh semblance of of humanity he has left in his brain whenever he hears the the rooster crow and he he has to he has to stay within a certain distance of the house (laughs) because he has to run back home right so every every night that the vampire clan draws him in more he gets further and further away from the house. And I say that at some point in time, he gets to a point where he's, he's just able to make it back into the, like, fr- like, you know, running up the front porch stairs in the house, slams the door closed. And he's like, his body is like smoking, like smoldering, right? Like steaming. Right. And he has to decide, like, can he keep doing this? He, he, he loves Paul. He loves the chickens. But he also he feels this like bond with with the vampire group, and I would love to see a moment in the film. Maybe, maybe the film ends this way: that I would love to see a moment in the film where he he forgets what he's having too much fun with this beautiful drifter that who bit him, and uh, 
they're out they're they're biting other people they're doing their vampire you know things <laughs> and <laughs> that's what it says in the script vampire <laughs> things <laughs> and uh um and all of a sudden he he uh He's starting to walk into wherever, wherever their clan is at, like wherever their home base is, right, for the, for, for the day. And he hears barely in the distance, cockadoodle doo You know, it's barely in the distance, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he realizes, he's like, oh, shit, Paul, I have to, I can't, I have to go. So he's running as fast as he can back home. And it's just him running down like a country road. We see the house at, and then the farmhouse at, in the distance, we see like the rows of field, you know, corn or whatever, right? And like the sun is like coming up higher and higher, about to break the horizon. And we hear the, the, the rooster one more time, Cockadil do, right as he rounds the corner, right as he stumbles into the uh, chicken coop area, the where the chickens are doing their chicken thing. <laughs> whatever the, the the pen i guess yeah and uh he stumbles and falls Here, here's here's the here's the ending he stumbles and falls right as the sun comes up smashes a dozen eggs burst into flames and then it cuts to his paw having scrambled eggs <laughs> so he doesn't even care <laughs> well, but, but, but at this point, what, what can he do? He's he's lost his wife. He's lost all of his eggs. He's now lost his son for good. He he, he has to make something. He he's a farmer. He has to make good with what he has. That's what they do. Yeah, boy <laughs> falls over, and bursts into flames, makes scrambled eggs. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't throw those <laughs> eggs away. Those are good eggs. Well, I was just laughing in the middle of that because I was imagining, um him being in like a chicken coop with all the animals and all of the animals are just voiced over by you going like Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Cluck. Cluck. <Ooh. laughs> just the most un- like uninterested uh, like, animal sounds. Yeah, like half-hearted fucking Moo. animal voice, Cluck. human voice. Cluck. <laughs> yeah. All right. What was that called again? Yeah. I think this episode is going to be called. Um, I made a note whenever you said it. Cockadoodle do. When he hears the rooster crow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs>